Good morning. Welcome to Fiber Town, episode 169. This is um, Thursday morning in my kitchen, and Alice is over having her breakfast, and um, it's October 20th. It's the day after my birthday, 2016. I am 44 years old, and yeah, the day before that was my 20th wedding anniversary. So it's been a very busy week, and we've just returned from our anniversary trip to New York State, uh, where we attended Rhinebeck Sheep and Wool Festival. And this was the first time that my husband and I had gotten away without our kids for that long, ever. So, um, you know, we'd been away, but just never for that amount of time. And it was lovely, and it kind of, you know, as much as we love our family and our children, it gives gives us a little bit of a taste of what's to come in the next 10 or so years, hopefully, of uh, just being us again, mostly. At any rate, I have a very disorganized brain um, and lots to tell you about, so I'll do my best to make it all as cohesive as possible. Um, as I said, yesterday was my birthday, and I've had a lot of work things going on and just sort of came back, hit the ground running. Um, kids doing all sorts of things and just sort of helping with that work because I said so I wanted to take a moment because I, I wanted to share while it's still pretty fresh in my head about our trip to Rhinebeck as well as everything else that's going on in my crafty life so a few things to just mention the magic along is happening and that's the word of the month for October so go and look in the thread um, I actually haven't had a chance to look at the new submissions there um, but take a look at the Fiber Town Ravelry group um, I do have a prize for that and I will show you later uh, let's see oh fleece wise the response has been so lovely and I know a lot of um, at least for me <laughs> you know, I'm not one of these 6,000, 7,000 subscriber podcasts, but I love that you have subscribed and I have a lot of new subscribers, relatively speaking, and I'm thrilled about that. And I'm thrilled if you guys have left um, comments and I apologize if I haven't been able to respond, but I read them all and I, I value them all so much. So thank you. I do have a prize in the works for FleeceWise. And I think this will be given um, by the end of the year because the discussion is ongoing. I haven't really decided when it's going to happen. But this is also, Police Wise is a work in progress. Part one is complete. Have you listened to them and watched them? I hope so. It was a lot of fun. So this is the prize so far. And this package contains a bat of yogurt. It's a very, probably if you've watched me before, I'm sure you've heard of yogurt as well as some yogurt locks, and then, I'm not going to take it all out, but I have two um, bits of Gotland. I have an adult Gotland. And these are very special fleeces. And then I have the Gotland lamb. And down here I have a little little carded bat as um, of my Coopworth cross, as well as a bunch of Coopworth locks. And I may have other things included in here, but this is a very special and personal gift to a random winner of Fleece Wise. And I will draw from the thread on the RAV group when it's time. So if you've already commented and shared your, oops, hang on. If you've already commented and shared your expertise and your questions and your comments, thank you. If you haven't, continue. And if you have already, don't, uh, feel free to to um, keep talking and people have asked questions of the group and the group is the most valuable source of information and experience so please feel free to go ahead and uh, enter as many times as is logical all right I think that's it for businessy things I hope I hope I'm not leaving anything out so let's talk about FOs oh I left my phone in the other room well I finished a dress um, it is an Anna dress, and you may have seen it. It's on Instagram. I love this dress. I wore it yesterday um, to do some work things um, out and about, and I find it very versatile. It's uh, an Anna dress, as I said, by um, the company is by hand, by hand London. This is the second one I've made, and um, it's made out of a birch um, double gauze 
organic double gauze and it's navy with white birds on it. And the birds are kind of, they feel like they're almost like a, a decal, um, interestingly enough. Um, and I did show, did I show, oh, I may have shown this last week. Oops. Um, in that case, you've seen it. But um, this is, that was my second invisible zipper. And I think for the third one, because I make more Anna dresses. In fact, I'm thinking about making one in, in plaid. Um, I find that they don't look too dressy, but they look fun. Um, and I, I like the fit very much. I think for my third invisible zip, I'm going to use a contrasting thread color. Because even with my invisible zipper foot, I am sewing too close to the teeth in places. I don't know how it happens. The invisible zipper's foot should keep the zipper part separated from the tape, the zipper tape, which you sew down onto your garment. So I've had to sort of, if the zipper gets stuck, I've, I've stitched too close to the teeth. I have to go and unpick, but I've been using dark thread and the zipper tape is dark, so it's impossible. So I think I will use a contrasting color, make that a little easier on myself next time. But it is an eminently wearable dress. Okay, I have one FO. I just finished these last night, and they are Hamilton socks. I'm a sock blank. I dyed myself. Here they are. Um, I knit these two at a time. I knit um, actually two at a time for about until they hit the heel flap. This is just my usual sock recipe. Um, at the heel flap, I just with this is a double knit as a sock. It's not double knit. In the sense that you know double knitting but the strands are held double in the sock blank I'm going to stay away from that in the future um, it's not fun unraveling and I thought knitting two at a time would make it better and I think it did in a sense but I just couldn't bring I just wanted to separate and in fact I had new knit pro zings to try and decided because I was doing them both on one long circular a US one and a half 2.5 millimeters so I separated. I did one sock on my Zings, and I did one on my Chow Goose Circulars, and the socks are quite different fitting. The ones on the Circulars are they're tight. Um, the gauge is just, a, it's just different enough, and in fact you might be able to see there's a slight difference in height. The socks knit on the double points are just, they're just more relaxed feeling. But they're done! And this is what's left of the blank. And this is sock pair 11 for the year. So my goal every year is to knit a pair a month. So I knit this, or I knit this from the opposite end and it says, it said not throwing away my shot. And I have not away left. I don't know what will become of this. It'll go into the blanket. It'll go into scraps. We'll see. So again, that was dyed by me. Um, you know, I kettle dyed the sock blank and then I paint, I stenciled on dye mixed with guar gum for the writing. I think that's it for finished objects. I have at this point one major whip. That's my daughter's flax cardigan. I'm on the first sock, the first sock, the first sleeve. And, um, She's tried it on for fit. It looks great. She has requested extra ease in the sleeves, so I have added two extra stitches. This is out of Barocco Remix, and it is recycled yarn, and the content, it's actually not quite the right color. The sleeve is more the right color. Um, it has cotton and linen and silk and acrylic. I actually don't think it has wool at all. <gasps> it's deep stash. It was um, it was a gift from a fiber fairy godmother. The other work in progress, and really this is just seeing one square knit on it this weekend to memorialize Rhinebeck, um, and that is my mitered square blanket. It's pretty massive. I think it's around 300 squares, 320 maybe, and I'm looking for the square I added. Oh, here it is. And spun hobbledehoy. There it is. Yes, indeed. Goes back in its giant bag. <laughs> I thought I would get more knit on it. Um, 
over the trip, but I focused on socks and sweater. I don't remember what else. Spinning. Some spinning. So yeah, goes back in the bag, and I really wanted a square that was knit in front of the fireplace and on our porch and our on our rental. So I got that. Okay, so let's talk spinning. And I actually, I'm just going to dig into my stuff down here and talk about it as it comes. I'm not sure I will have it all. This is really spinning and acquisitions. So let's take a look. Okay. This is just a random thing on top. Let's talk about that. It has to do with spinning, which I will talk about first. So when I got home from Rhinebeck, I decided to air out my hand spun stash. And um, I took everything off the shelf and laid it out on a table and sort of organized it by fleece spins, natural colors, hobbledehoy, gourmet stash, uh, into the, not, oh wait, no, two into the worlds? Into the world, Highland Handmaids, I have a lot of hers from her club. Oh. Did I show? Yeah, I did show her club last time. And in the back of the shelf, I found these. These, I don't believe they're my very first yarns, but they may be my second. They are singles. Uh, they are purple. Shocker. Look at that pigtail. They are unfinished, as in I don't think they were ever, this one was probably washed. This one was, I don't think so. Look, look at that. You know, that almost looks plied. It's not, it's just art yarn. <laughs> so I will keep these. I just wanted to share. If you're a brand new spinner, your yarn may look like this, and you're doing great. Um, so that was fun. What else do I have? I have some Lincoln spun up. And I finally started to use my Gustler Designs tags that I got at uh, SSK this year. So this is 2.75 ounces, 190 yards. It's a lace to fingering weight, really. Um, drum carded Lincoln. I spun on my largest ratios, applied on my largest ratios. I think I should have applied on a smaller ratio. It's quite energized. You know, it does, does not quite sit, sit quite how a balanced yarn would. It's a little twist to it, not too much, but you know, I should really reskein it to see how it looks reskeined. But let me show you. This is a chain ply. And it's pretty thin in places. Um, even, pretty even, I mean. But it's just got this energy to it that kind of speaks to sock knitting. And that was the plan, actually. I have Wensleydale and North Ronaldsey and Lincoln. I'm going to knit them into socks. And this will probably be the foot. Really breed socks. Inspired by... Um, Fiber track, Swensty's husband, and the socks he made out of different breeds. It was very shiny, and I have a lot of Lincoln left to spin, and I, I'm going to play around with different ratios. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, uh, let's see. I'm having a hard time accessing <laughs> this stuff at the bottom of the basket. Just one sec. Mm. Okay, let me show you this since it's on the top. I did a little bit of spinning on my weekend, some hobbledehoy gorgeousness. What did she call these? I can't remember the name of the bats, but um, this is my Erin Make Stuff spindle, and I did another one with some of her other bats in that collection. I started an orange one on, where is it? Maybe in here. Started an orange bat. Yes. On my little golding, my Tsunami. Didn't get much done on it. Underneath here is some soe fiber that I started spinning at Rhinebeck. Um, I, I went to a breed talk on soe sheep and I asked the shepherd if I could try um, some of his samples he had out. It was just um, 
it was washed, I think, but you know, it was still in this unchanged lock form because it was pretty disorganized. At any rate, so yeah, that's that's an interesting little spindle with fun stuff on it. Oh, uh, let's see. I spun the North Ronaldy that I had had from Deb Robson's class at Shenandoah last year. Let me take, let me show you what I have. And come back, come out of here. Okay, as I said, disorganized, sorry. Okay, the first bit of the North Ronald Z I have, I spun woolen. Um, yeah, so what I did is I combed the locks and I took the combing waste, there was a lot of combing waste, and I carded it, and I spun that. And this is the carded bits of North Ronaldsy. And I talked about, this is a little skein that will go into my blanket. It's fuzzy and, and squishy, and it's full, actually full of camp. I've got white camp and black camp. Let's see if we can just see. Um, right here, some white camp. I didn't take anything out of this. I just took what was offered to me by the fleece. Um, yeah, so this is the, this will go into, I'm not sure if I'll use this skein or the other skein, but this will go into socks, the breed at least. And then I, I took the combed locks and I spun them pretty much the same style, but with a different preparation. And it's smoother. So, woolen, worsted, woolen, worsted. Can you see a difference? Same spinning technique, pretty much. Different preparations. Squish, a little smoother. Um, so I think I'll probably use this one in the sock. I think worsted. It's probably better for socks. I might, I could use the woolen for the cuffs. That would be nice in the leg. Um, so I think that is all I have for spinning. And then I'm going to talk about right back. So let me show you acquisitions. Magnolia 13, the loveliest, gave me a bag of Brutus, which is a Romney weather. He is a Romney weather. Look at that. Beautiful color. I think she washed this once. She recommends I wash it again. Um, I helped her pick Brutus out. He's just got a gorgeous fleece at Maryland two years ago. So I get a little bit of Brutus. I'm really excited for that. Other gifts, Claire of the Woolly Thistle surprised me with this beautiful alpaca from John Arvin Textiles. It's stunning. It's from the Woolly Thistle. It's not as purple as it looks. It's more, it's muted a little bit that's not heathery, but really gorgeous. Very thin yarn, interestingly constructed. Ooh, it's a lace weight. It's the colorway Damson. Alpaca 2 3 ply. It's alpaca nylon, 10% nylon, 654 yards, 400 grams. So that's lace weight. I have some other things coming to me from the Woolly Thistle that I purchased on my birthday. It was my birthday. Um, oh yes, um, Sarah Pomegranate gave me some hand spun with a marker and a jar of her sister's um, raw honey, which is amazing. And let's see, things I bought. I purchased this from Hawk Meadow Mountain. Karen Tenney Hand Weaver. She is from New York. Cobble Skill. Cobbles Kill, New York. Let's see the card. And, you know, if you're in Rhinebeck area, the Rhinebeck area, you may see a lot of um, a lot of place names that have kill in them. And I actually looked it up last year, and kill is Dutch, I think, for a stream or a creek. So um, it all looks very violent until you look it up. So from this lovely hand weaver, I purchased something. Purchased something last year, and I purchased a new hand towel. I think this will go in my bathroom, the girls' bathroom, as we call it. And 
It's gorgeous. She does gorgeous weaving. Hmm, what else? Um, my one yarn purchase is this. Look at that color. Get some fleece on it. <laughs> this is from Foster Farm, Wensleydale and Romney. This is a gorgeous fingering weight. Um, it's shiny from the long wools. It is not prickly at all. It's not merino. It's strong, and not prickly. And it's got a nice squish for um, a long wool blend. And I just love that color. This is going in my color work basket because this color must be in color work. And that's, you know, what I'm thinking about right now is casting on the Lovage sweater. So Carol from Foster Farm Yarn, I got to chat with her a little bit. Um, Schuylerville, New York. So love that. I purchased some flatter from what is the company? Soak <laughs> in the celebration scent. And I had heard a strange rumor that they were discontinuing this scent in their soak, in their wool wash. They are not. They have a new, a new pineapple scent, but I had been curious about trying this and it was right in front of me, so I, I bought it. Oh, let's see. Oh my goodness, wait, wait. There's more stuff. So this, lo oh. June Hemmons Hyatt was there and she was selling her knitting belts, her Sir Scott her Shetland knitting belts. And I'm I'm tempted. I'm, that's in the back of my head for some day. This is so nice. At the podcaster meetup, I was given this by Danelle Marie, three strands fiber on Instagram. Happy New York Sheep and Wool 2016. It's a luggage tag that she made. Super sweet with adorable sheep knitting. Thank you so much, Danelle Marie. I, I hope you're watching and hear me say thank you again. That was lovely. Um, oh, I got to see um, Sharon, who does Knit Style Yarns. <coughs> and she's dyeing yarn now, and she gave me this amazing sample. I saw her in the... Oh, and has a coupon code. And, um, yeah, she does Knit Style Yarns, Fallen Fairy. Really beautiful. And this will go right into my blanket. Thank you, Sharon. Um, I saw Corey and Megan who are doing Knit Cahoots and they gave me a patch. Love it. And um, I met their friend, what is her name? Yarn Hoarder. I remember her name. She has a new podcast. Anyway, they were all traveling together with their daughters. And um, I got to chat with Corey's daughter a little bit and she's, she's lovely. And then also at the podcaster meetup, Let's see, Fiber, Flame and Fiber Podcast, Rhinebeck 2016, and she makes, with a torch, I believe, she makes these glass um, stitch markers. They're beautiful. Yeah, so Flame and Fiber Podcast, check it out on YouTube. Love it. Um, if you came and said hello to me at Rhinebeck, thank you. It was really, really great to see you. Um, and I hope you had a great time. Let's see, what else do I have? Oh, there's a little button from Foster Sheep Farm. So cute. And oh, I also have this. I haven't opened it yet. This was from Casey of Tangerine Designs, and she was handing them out at Leaping Llamas on Sunday morning. Fun stuff. Let's see what we have. I made it to Knitter's Prom, right back 2016. <laughs> It is, you go to see and be seen, <laughs> just like prom. You are awesome. I could put this, oh, look, it has instructions. I could give this to, I was thinking I would put this in a kid's lunch, but wait, I could keep it and put it on a knitted gift. Tangerine Designs, lovely of her to hand these out. Ooh, and she has patterns on Ravelry, and there's a coupon code on this. Hi, my name is Casey De Crozier. I design knitwear. She has knitwear on Ravelry, so check her out. I saved that to open it when I got home. Almost done with acquisitions. Um, one great thing, thing about Rhinebeck is the authors. The people that come to sign books and promote their new ventures. And last year I got um, Knitlandia signed by Clara Parks, and they, she gave away free galley copies. This year, there's a fabric designer there, Heather Ross. I grabbed a catalog. She has really great stuff and a little fat quarter. How cute. 
Kelly Ross. She had a stack of really fun fat quarters. So I grabbed her catalog as well and it's full of gorgeous quilts. Um, <laughs> I really got a chuckle out of this one. It's called Single Girl, you know, the wedding ring quilts where they're interlaced. This is like a, a snub your nose to that. <laughs> Be a single girl in a single wedding ring quilt instead of the uh, intertwined ones. So I really like that. So she designs for Wyndham fabrics. That's a really pretty one with a little snail. Um, so my last acquisition had to do with my birthday. And that was, I was very surprised that this vendor was there. I don't recall if they were there last year, and I should have asked. But I did ask if they vend anywhere else, and they do not. They used to come to Maryland Sheep and Wool, and they do not. And that was Golding. Showed you my other little ring spindle. It is the best drop spindle that I have, and that I have ever tried. That includes, for me, my Bosworth. Which is a good spindle. But I gotta tell you, the Goldings, they have the ring. They spin forever. They spin super well. And I got a new Golding. This was my birthday gift. One of them. And I really wanted a bigger spindle. My Tsunami is less than an ounce and it doesn't have you know, the shaft is small enough that it doesn't have these grooves. But I've spun with other people's goldings that have the grooves, and they make it so easy to wind on. Just really, really lovely. So this is a two and a half inch maple whorl with vintage enamel and a brass ring. Some of them, I mean, they're, they're mostly works of art. This is one of the simpler ones because they're pricey. They're works of art. They also make amazing wheels. So this is called the Regal, and the shaft is walnut, and it weighs 1.26 ounces. So fairly light. Some of the more ornate ones get heavier. So I really, you know, love those. But this seems like a good middle of the road weight for me, and I love it. I really love it. Same with a little bit of fiber called Empire Apple. Ooh, there's a coupon in here too. Oh, and this is from Ingle Nook Fibers. Excellent. <laughs> so, oh, I didn't, I forgot to mention my one. Oh no, this is a, uh, never mind. I bought this yesterday. I bought another skein of Harrisville Watershed. This is the Mallard colorway because I'm in love with this yarn now. And I have leftovers from my colorwork hat of this color. And I think they would be lovely together. Um, my finished hat is just the best, the best. So I got more. <laughs> uh, I went to Loops Yarn Works in DC yesterday and I had a 20% a 20 off thing for my birthday. I got another thing of soak, um, wool wash, and then I got this. And this color is not, it's sort of it. It's more green. It's looking blue here. It's much more green. Yeah, and this is a colorway I forget, but it was, it went into my my latest color work hat from Pom Pom. And speaking of Pom Pom and other things, I don't know how my husband snuck this into the car. I think he put it in like the spare tire wheel, the spare tire well in our car. He bought me a birthday present there and I didn't even know. So he purchased the Ross Farm, extremely rare, Hog Island for me. And I have spun Hog Island before. I've spun the white, which was a fleece I purchased at Mount Vernon. It was one of, I think it was the first sheep's wool fleece I had. It was extremely challenging. Not a good beginner fleece. And I, I processed some of it and then I sold the rest. <laughs> um, just destashed it. So this is even rarer. I've also spun gray, I think from Finger Lakes Woolen Mill. But this color right here, oh, God, it feels amazing. And so does the gray. The white feels a little, a little bit coarser and spongier, but Hog Island, it's it's another, you know, descendant of primitive breeds. I don't know if you'd really call it a primitive breed because it's not dual coated, but incredible like inconsistency in lock structure, like in length. Crazy inconsistency. Um, but look, that's a lovely collection in that. 
It was from my sweet husband. Um, and it was funny because as I was buying the golden spindle, he was with me. I was like, this will be my birthday present. And he just kind of went. And I was like, there's other stuff? <laughs> Too late. I'm buying the spindle. And then Amy of Ross Farm, because she's a sweetheart and a lovely person. And they looked like they were having a great sale. Their stuff is super amazing. Anyway, she threw in some presents for me too. Some power scour, which I'm definitely going to use. I haven't talked about my fleece purchases yet. And then she also threw in this. And you may know that I have this already. Um, but this is the, I think, the most amazing pom-pom out there. Issue of pom-pom. And the pom-pom people were there. And they are... Um, they had their new issue. I didn't really get to look at it, but it's like they had a um, advanced copy. That's the word. So this is the hat I knit out of Harrisville Watershed Asklov. Anyway, this is the October prize. Thank you, Amy, for giving me my October prize. This is full of naturally dyed wool knit into amazing product projects. And it's full of naturally dyed tutorials and articles, and this is just lovely. So if you win the magic along, um, this is the prize. Mm, excuse me. Now, if you already have it, we will work something out. You can, you know, let me know. Pick another person. You can, you can pick another person, and I'll gift it to them. But yes. Um, so that was for my birthday. And thank you. I forgot to say thank you for all of the birthday wishes I got. Thank you. Now let's talk about fleece wise and then we are we're all done. So I met up with my my fleece wise buddies, Sarah, Sarah, and Claire. And let me take a drink. We set a time to meet at the fleece tent. And it was later than I could stand for my own personal fleece shopping. So I went first thing after um what did I do first? I don't know. Because I think I went directly there. Oh, I did buy some things for my family. I did that first. And then I went to the police tent. And I, a lot of you have said thank you for including sort of a taboo subject in Fleece Wise, which is money. And I won't shy away from the, the taboo, you know, the taboo subjects if they're relevant. So this fleece, let me just give you the, the details. This fleece was $47.30, and it is an Icelandic fleece, which I have never processed. I have spun some. Um, so let's see, it's um, in the primitive category. It is, I'm not sure why they called it long, primitive slash long wool. Two pounds, three ounces. It was a two year, six month animal. I don't have any other information about the animal. And here is the scorecard. Uniformity was an average. Density, all f a dense fleece for the grade. That got excellent marks. Weight also got excellent marks. A length got above average marks. Handle got above average marks. Yet, they put a red sticker on it, which means that there was something, there was an issue with the fleece. And I still don't know what the issue is. A blue sticker meant that, you know, it scored well on everything. I didn't look at the other primitive breeds. And one trend we noticed is that the primitive breeds, including Shetland, are not graded on crimp. And I will show you a reason why. And this was a New York fleece. This is, a, I have some of it washed and drying outside. We've had crazy hot weather, so I needed to take advantage of that. So here's a reason why um, crimp is really not scored on primitive fleeces. Here's one lock. Here's another. So again, Icelandic is a dual coated fleece. And this, you know, Primitive breeds do not always look the same the whole way through the fleece. And in fact, they 
sometimes really amazing differences. You can have differences in lock structure through any fleece, but that's pretty, pretty drastic. So um, you can see there are some, I don't know if you get up close, you see there are some crimpier bits. Um, I believe I need to make sure my words are correct. I think the outer coat is the tog and the inner coat is the fell. And that's Icelandic, Icelandic names for those two things. And if you, apparently this is easier to do once it's washed and this is still raw, but I'm just taking the tog off. Very easy to do. So you can process them separately or together. I think I will process them together. Um, if you process them separately, you really have to process, you know, spin this quite differently. Look how, look at the staple length on that. Eight inches maybe? And this is downy and soft. So I don't know if I will spin this, but there's, there's a lot of this as well. So I don't know. I am undecided, but I'm kind of tickled at how easy it was to separate those two. I hadn't tried it yet. Oh, very lovely. Let me see if I can find the card here. There was a card somewhere. I think I wrapped it back up into, when I folded the fleece back up. This fleece was well... Um, where is it? This, here it is down here. This fleece was well um, skirted and managed. You know, it was folded up very nicely. The fleece sale at Rhinebeck highly discouraged us from opening up these fleeces. Um, all right, so here it is. Sweet Dreams Farm. Helene Davis, Abby Davis. So from Salem, New York. Icelandic sheep. Look how precious. <laughs> Icelandic Sweet Dreams. Um, so I'm very excited. I, I still don't know how I'm going to work with that. But I like to daydream about these things. Now the other fleece that, well the fleece-wise fleece that we ultimately decided on is another primitive. And it is a Shetland. And here are some washed locks. So again, this is what I believe is called a transitional Shetland. It's not um, traditional. It's not, I think the other designation is modern maybe, or American. Sorry, I, I should look at Deborah Oaks and she, she tells me about it. This is definitely a transitional one. I'm sure about the, the terminology for this. Look at that. Look at that crimp. You really can't see. There we go. Beautiful tips. This is Eloise. And she is like a very light fawn color. Grayish fawn. And now here, this is also Eloise. And you can see... The outer coat just like the Icelandic. Let's see how easy it is to separate this out. There we go. Not hard to do. This has been washed. Um, so we really went back and forth about this fleece. Um, Shetlands are expensive. I think we paid significantly. It was two and three quarters pounds. And Shetlands, I'm not sure why yet. I need to find out. Chime in if you know. I'm not sure why Shetlands are 30 to $40 a pound, but they are. Um, I don't know if it has to do with the fact that they're smaller. I don't think they're more rare. I need to find out. Deb Robson is writing a book about Shetlands, and I cannot wait till she comes out with that um, because they're just such an interesting sheep types. You know, you could have different locks within the same fleece. And Eloise did have a blue sticker. She had very high marks. Again, her crimp was not judged at all because it's just so varied, especially in a transitional fleece. Um, anyway, Shetlands have different pattern markings. They have like more than 20 different pattern markings, 11 different colors. And uh, I'm still on the fence as to what this particular one this particular color would be called. But yes, so we divided um, to Eloise in four parts. We are not going to tell each other how we are working with it. It's going to be a surprise. Um, yeah, so these are the different colors of Shetland. 
I think it might be a musket. Musket color, which is this one. But then, it no, it does not look like Emskit. Emskit has this dusky blue-gray. Light, so musket is defined as light grayish brown mixed light and brown fibers. Or it might be like, it might be light gray. I'm not sure. I'll have to see what everyone else thinks. Um, so there's so many pattern varieties, color varieties, lock varieties, crimp varieties. It's just a really, really interesting sheet. Um, so... Other than delicious falafel and dogs catching frisbees and apple cider donuts and podcaster meetups and all sorts of Rhinebeck goodness, Stephen West was there, head to toe, knitwear, brioche. Um, I saw the yarn harlot. It is knitter's prom. It is, you know, the difference. Uh, it's, it's a bit, it's more cosmopolitan and less country than Maryland. I love Maryland. It's where I do most of my buying for the year in terms of um, fiber and yarn. You know, I don't, I don't buy a lot of yarn anymore, but um, Rhinebeck had some really great farm yarns. So uh, the foster sheep farm among them. Um, the Leaping Llamas is another amazing highlight. Uh, the food. The knitwear, it's cold enough. I mean, nor the people from the northern part of the states thought it was hot. It was cold in the mornings and warm enough for me to wear a sweater in the afternoons. I mean, cold enough. Um, but it, it was in the 60s. So, you know, I've gotten used to being in the south. And when it hits 65, people put on sweaters here. So, um there were a lot of people I wanted to see that I didn't get to see. It felt very busy and very um, crowded. Um, you know, there are, of course, areas where you can go and just um, chill and be by yourself. But yeah, a lot of the areas are quite crowded, and so are the barns. And um, So yeah. What else did I want to say? So... As FleeceWise 2 crystallizes, we will share more information with you guys. I hope that you continue to um, participate in FleeceWise, and if you would like to win my Fibery Prize, just go ahead to the group and, and comment there. Ask questions, that sort of thing. Oh my goodness. Now I have to go and put all this away, and it's actually a good thing because I can bring things together and really sort of tie up the loose ends from my journey. And yeah, until next time, everyone, take care.